It's y'all spiritual fairy godmother and I am back. Okay, except for I'm not back with another read. I'm back with the let's talk about it. All right, so we finna go ahead and smoke. So if y'all got a blunt, go ahead and spark up. If you got a bong, some wine, food, snacks, <laughs> drinks, you know, whatever you got, go ahead and grab it because we finna go ahead. We finna get into it. Um, what made me think about this topic today? Oh, so I was basically. Telling myself, like, I'm not ready to fucking, I'm not ready to do this. Like, I'm not ready to do this. So, a goal that I have of mine, I basically was walking and telling myself, like, I'm damn near not ready to do it. So, today's topic is going to be, you know you're ready when you think you're not. And I know that sound backwards, right? Don't it sound backwards? I know. But it's the truth. So, let me tell y'all why. And, of course, y'all can drop y'all comments down below and tell me how y'all feel about the situation. But... <sighs> For me, I feel like there's so much beauty in your awareness, your awareness of yourself, your awareness of your journey, your awareness of your actions, of what you got going on, of how you're treating others, of how others are treating you, your impact on the world, all of that. So for me, I've been noticing that like lately... I've been noticing my faults and I'll talk about this a little bit in the last talk about let's talk about it but realizing my faults has helped me be a better human being it has helped me love other people a little bit better realizing my faults has made me okay so what was an example oh this girl okay so this girl oh all right, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So I have a bad fear of rejection. Like, I hate being rejected. I hate being told no. I hate being turned down. That shit make me feel some type of way, and it affects my confidence. But I feel like God is just showing me that, like, my confidence should not be affected by shit that happens. <laughs> my confidence should not be affected by my circumstances, somebody telling me no, somebody not responding, shit like that. So basically what had happened was I had wrote this woman and um, she's like an influencer. You know, she's big. She has her own business. She, you know, like she doing big shit. She's a scientist. She's super fucking smart. Like she's a, like a bioscience major or something like that. Like she's a fucking chemist. I don't know what the fuck she is, but she's smart as fuck. And like intelligence just is my thing. Like I like that shit. So I like, I love watching her story. I love watching her navigate through life and shit. And she seems so depressed. Like, it's crazy because she seemed like she got so much going for herself. But I can tell by what she posts. I can tell by her energy. I can tell by how her face look and her pictures. She just not okay. So I reached out, you know, giving her some spiritual advice. And for me, I think that shit weird. I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to say it. Like, I think that shit weird. I think that shit weird for motherfuckers to be like, I feel your energy and da, 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 da. Like, I be feeling like that shit is a scam. But I just, I felt called to say what the fuck I said to her. And she responded immediately. And I was so nervous about what she was going to say. Like, I just muted her. Like, I didn't want to see it because... I'm like, well, what did she say? Like, bitch, don't write me on that shit or don't say nothing to me like that or I don't believe in this demonic shit or... So I'm realizing, like, damn, like, fuck. So I'm avoiding watching her story now because in my mind, she done told me to fuck off. So two days go by and I'm, like, avoiding watching her story. And I'm, like, realizing, like, that's guilt on my part because I did something wrong, like... I left her hanging. I abandoned her. I don't know what she said. Even if she would have cussed me out or said no, which she didn't. But it's just like, I don't, you know, like I put myself in that position out of fear that, you know, and it's like, what are you scared of? I'm scared of myself. I'm scared of what people have always told me about me, that I was crazy. I'm scared about that everybody think what I do is demonic. And this is my career. This is my livelihood. This is my purpose. 
So I'm not just reading cards because I fucking want to. I didn't just stumble upon this shit. This shit stumbled upon me. So, and realizing that it made me want to go look at the message. It made me want to be like, damn, like, bitch, you're not what you scared of. Like, you ain't no scary ass hoe, bitch. Like, what? And I remember being in middle school, I used to be scared to fight girls. And I used to be scared of confrontation. And I'm just like, so I'm scared of shit. I'm scared to steal and do little shit. Like, I'd be scared of some shit. So, in realizing how scared I was of rejection, I realized that I was hindering myself from putting myself out there. I talked about this before as well. I'm so scared to go live on Instagram because I feel like it's niggas over there that be in my DM. Like, I don't know. I don't want them to look at me as weird. Like, right now they looking at me like, she's sexy. Like, oh, damn, I like her. She did. She did. Like, oh, like, look at her. I don't know. But it's like, it's embarrassing if y'all come on my live and I only got one person watching or you know, motherfuckers be like, you do fucking terror readings and you do this. It's like, Instagram just feel like such a different community. And it's not even just about the niggas because I, I realized that I just made that a whole example. And it's not even just about the niggas. Let me say that. It's about everybody. Like, bitch, you on here with one follower? You got one person watching you? Or bitch, what if ain't nobody on that motherfucking? I'm just talking to myself. Like, it's the fear of getting started because I know that... If I really took Instagram serious, I could be an Instagram influencer. Like, I know that. I know my vibe. I know who I am. I know what the fuck I bring to the table. I'm a vibe. Like, that just it is what it is. But I don't put in the work. Like, I I am lazy as hell when it comes to, like, if I'm not being reassured that I'm doing a good job, if I'm not getting paid out what the fuck I feel like I deserve, if I'm not getting what I want out this friendship or whatever the fuck the situation is i'm going to bounce like that's just it's just how i am like my way or the highway which i'm spoiled like i'm spoiled and i didn't know i was spoiled <laughs> i did not know i was spoiled i had to be shown that i had to see like you really do like shit a certain type of way because you've always gotten shit a certain type of way and then when you didn't you festered on that shit and then you figured out a way to give yourself exactly what the fuck you wanted how you wanted it so i don't rely on other people too much like i i won't allow myself to rely on other people i want to i have that desire to like i always want to talk to somebody see somebody have somebody love me have this person want to be my best friend and want to come over my house and talk to me and see me and kick it with me and I don't know like I'm just I like shit like I like what I like I like attention I like love I like reassurance I like I like proof I like some proof or some shit because a motherfucker tell you anything but I like a motherfucker actions I like what you show me if it's good if it's good if it's not I like that shit too because show me who the fuck you are you know like you can lie all the fuck you want to, but baby, you can't pretend for too long, okay? You just can't. So, <sighs> for me, I really just feel like realizing in that moment that, damn, you really got so afraid that you just, in. It's not even like I went around like, oh, my God, I want to know this girl. I want to be her friend. Or it was just like in a moment, I know that I respect this woman. I want to speak to you and I want to say this. I feel called to say this. God told me to say this to you. And I got so scared of myself. I got so scared of the outcome that I completely missed out on the opportunity to be a healer, to be a life coach, to be walking in my purpose. Like... Who knows where that fuck that conversation would have went? Who knows if she would have had questions or if she would have needed something or wanted to talk more or and it don't, it don't matter what the outcome actually was. It's just like the thought of I held myself back. I've done that a lot. Like I've noticed like I send a risky text like on some shit like snapping. 
<laughs> or telling the motherfucker how I feel. And then I'll just block him. Like, I'll just block him. Like, nigga, fuck you. Fuck you. I don't know. I've been doing that shit for years. Like, even, no, I don't think, like, middle school, high school. I don't know if it was a blocking feature. But, bitch, I'll stop being your friend. Bitch, I'm not sitting with you at lunch no more. Like, bitch, no. Like, type shit. I've always been the, able to detach, right? And I'm like, I'm not ready for no damn relationship. Like, I'm like, I... I thought I was ready for marriage, and then I realized, like, I really never was. Like, I used to say that, like, I want my husband, and I still want my husband, but it's just, like, I'm not ready to be nobody fucking wife. <laughs> like, I am because I know that. I am ready because... I'm re I'm willing to change the shit about me that makes me not ready to be my wife. I know this thing just how I communicate with my nigga. Like, I'm punishing you for some shit that you're doing wrong instead of teaching you how to do that shit better. And what I realized was that, damn, I'm loving you just like I loved my ex. Instead of, I don't even want to say loving you, but I'm dating you how I dated my ex. Instead of learning from how I loved my ex. So, even in that moment, I'm like, damn, okay. If I say I want a husband, then how I date these niggas, I gotta, I gotta come like that's what I'm worthy of. And I wasn't. I wasn't. I was moving quick, like, just... Again, not being aware, and now that I'm aware, it's like, wow, okay. So you thought you were so ready, so you wasn't fixing shit. You wasn't in a mode of getting better or seeking better or, you know, like, elevation. You, I wasn't, I wasn't in that space. I'm just like, shit, I'm a good-ass woman. Like, I deserve my husband. But now I'm realizing, like, if I want my husband, I got to work for him. Like, I pray to God he's somewhere working on himself for me. You know, not for me, but for our family. You know, I pray that he's mending his relationship with his father. And I pray that he's healing himself and putting himself in a position of, I, I'm saying healing shit with his father. Like, I just know this man. Like, girl, listen, speaking of into existence, baby, because period. Okay. But yeah, like. I will hope and pray that my husband is doing the work, like, you know, healing his trauma, healing the shit that he got going on. Even if he can't come to me right now for that healing, I will hope that he doing that shit in his day-to-day -day life. Like, you know, because I've been somewhere where I'm like trying to heal somebody. Not healing myself, but trying to heal somebody. I've been in that position in almost all of my relationships, all of them. And I don't know why. And I think it's because I'm a healer, but maybe I didn't know how to use that power. I feel like all women are healers and that's just period. But a lot of women are not in our feminine energy because we're so used to having to be the man. We're so used to being our own father. We're so used to being our, you know, our own protectors. So we hardly ever have any time to be the healers of the family. Like I dead ass feel like women heal the men. And the men protect the families. And while he protects them, I'm healing. Like, I'm praying for that nigga to have all that strength that he got. I'm behind him. While he fighting the world for us in front, I'm in the back praying to God. Like, God, keep my man safe. Shield that, shield that man. Protect him. Whatever he not telling me, whatever he got going on, whatever is stressing him and making him have a bad day, making him be upset, making him be angry. Lord, I ask that you grant him a peace of mind. I ask that you send him some of my love, like make him feel me, like please, because I need to feel him. So in certain moments of my shortcomings, it makes me want to level up. It makes me see future Caprice and aspire to be like her because I know she's not like this. She can't be like this because who I am today is not who I was like two weeks ago. Or like a month ago or six months ago. I'm just not. Even if I wanted to still be her, I've been through shit 
that has made it impossible for me to still be her. So I don't want to hold on to her or the ideal of her or, you know, like I don't, I don't want to. It's like now I want to move forward and in doing so, the new version of me is ready to be a better me. The new version of me is ready to accept that my shit stink. So that I can make my body healthier, clean my shit out so my shit don't stink as bad, you know, because my shit still going to stink as shit. But, I mean, hey, like, you know, like, I can do some shit to make me a little bit better. And I feel like that's where I am in my life. Like, I want to be better. I don't want to feel the way I feel. Like, I've noticed how I treat these niggas. I've noticed how I treat these females. Like, I've noticed how little value that I've put on my relationships with people and even though i know i'm not supposed to be friends with those people no more it's like damn bitch you was low-key moving kind of foul like how you was feeling some type of way about a bitch you ain't even tell her i've done that with all of my friends all of my friends bitch what communication skills next friend no actually i recently had a friend right and off rip, like, I'm like, look, if we gonna be friends, I'm gonna tell you how I feel. She ended up making me upset or making me feel some type of way. I told her. I told her for, like, three days in a row. Not three days in a row, but, like, three different times in a row. My feelings. And I told her my feelings. And I'm like, okay, well, I need a minute. Like, I need a minute to process everything that just happened. And motherfuckers did not respect that. And I'm like, okay fuck you then like the first time i try to communicate my feelings a motherfucker kind of like fuck my feelings like that shit don't matter i said what the fuck i said and i'm just like what the fuck so do communication really work so in my mind when some shit don't go right i say fuck that shit again that's me being scared of rejection like i will literally just be like all right fuck it like i don't <laughs> I don't know because it don't always even be a no or it don't even always be like a like it'd be like okay like let's say I want I want my nigga to say he's sorry like or I didn't got mad at him but I'm not mad at him no more it's like I want shit to be like how I want it to be like okay well get the fuck over it now or <laughs> Or if I, if I try to talk to you and you don't talk to me because you mad, because you got an attitude about something that I did, like I fucked up. Oh, baby, you got one time to not accept me trying to come talk to you and we is done. Baby, I will break up with you because we done. And in all my relationships, I've always been the type to be like, we done. Like, we done. Like, it's over. We breaking up. Girl. I will not be doing that to my man. Like, I'm breaking up. Go see you in the arms of a nigga, bitch. Who, where? I will never kick my nigga out of my house ever again. Like, whether we live together, whether I, he just coming over my crib. If you get into a, a fight with your spouse, baby, I feel like that is my number one fucking rule going into whatever new relationship I get into. Baby, you not fucking leaving this house when you mad. You not leaving this house. And I, that's not even like, actually, let me not even say that. Because I don't want to control nobody. It's like, if I'm going to learn you and how you, how we interact and it's going to be different, cool. I'm going to have to learn that. But on my end, I'm not going to be the one to tell a motherfucker, like, you got to go. Especially if we live together. Kicking a nigga out of his own house, especially that he pay bills for a bitch. No. That's a no-go, like... And as a woman, you think that shit cool, but, like, no. No, like... No, that shit not okay. So, again, it's just realizing certain shit. But I'm glad that I've had time to just kind of be single and heal myself and learn myself and just figure out these things about myself that I've learned from certain friendships, that I've learned from even certain jobs, like my boss entrepreneur black black owned business and it's just like watching her work just be like 
I want to take this shit and I want to store it. Like, I want this shit to be knowledge. I want these lessons to be a part of me being better. So everything that I'm experiencing, whether that shit good or bad, I'm trying to make sure that I'm just aware of it. Because when I tell you, like, it hurt my feelings so bad, y'all. Like, I just feel like in that moment realizing, like, damn, bitch, you scared of rejection, like, it was like it was an epiphany but it kind of made me insecure a little bit because it was like you scared of rejection like why though like do you not feel good enough like it made me question myself you know so that it was like a spiral of information it was like god was just kind of like it went from one thing to the next, like, and I feel like that's why I do what I do for others. Like, that's why I want to be a life coach because I even do that shit for myself. Like, I ask questions, like, I dig into some shit. Like, whoever my friends are, my men, like, they're not. You have to like to talk and shit, cause if you don't, baby, I will probably be bored. You know, like I. I really crave just like asking questions and getting to know the deeper meaning of shit. And for me, it was like realizing one thing made me go to, okay, so I went from being scared of rejection to insecurities to, but I am good enough, but why don't I feel good enough to where did this stem from? Well, why, who was I rejected by? What would, like, what made me feel rejected? I felt rejected from my parents. I felt rejected from a lot of boys. <laughs> the boys I wanted didn't want me, but other boys wanted me, just not the ones that I wanted type shit. Like I always was calling my mom or calling my dad or, and this is not no shade to nobody, you know, but this is my story and this is my testimony. And even if shit was different in reality, my reality was still valid at the time. Like my mom used to, come home from work really really late and I don't remember what time it was in real life to me it just felt like seven eight o'clock at night and you know if I'm a kid I gotta go to bed at like nine ten but I'm not because you didn't get home till seven eight and now shit you finna go in the bathroom you finna you finna do what you do uh you finna kick it you finna chill you finna uh, live your life or even go to your friend house or you know whatever and then you don't get the cooking dinner until like 10 o'clock at night 11 o'clock at night that used to be my biggest fucking pet peeve like mom will cook dinner so fucking late and now y'all I literally every night I don't eat dinner until like 11 12 2 o'clock in the morning yeah, and I used to blame it on Jonathan, like, because he was hustling. I'm like, shit, I want, my, I want his food to be hot, and I want to see it together when he get home. But really, I realized, like, I went back to, like, older videos, like, watching shit on my YouTube. And I'm like, girl, you've been staying up late. Like, look at you blaming a nigga for something. You know, girl, he had shit to do with that. That was you. That's another thing. I've been realizing, like, how much I blame Jonathan, like, how wrong I was loving Jonathan. Like... When he passed, I kept feeling like it was my fault because I felt like I was keeping him alive, which it wasn't my responsibility to do that. It never was. But as his woman, I felt like as soon as I broke up with him, because I broke up with him, we broke up. I didn't break up with him. We broke up. We both agreed because he kind of broke up with me too. Um, but yeah, we we broke up and he had been gone off the house for about three weeks. And I kept feeling insecure because I'm like I feel like he on drugs but it was like I was scared for him so it was making me want to keep in contact with him it was making me want to have hope for him and be like well we should still be together and now like grieving I kept feeling like this is not how I feel now but I kept feeling like it was my fault as if well if we would have stayed together he wouldn't have died. You know, he wouldn't have been in that car. You know, that wouldn't have been the situation. So, 
I had to deal with that for a long time. And I think I'm still dealing with that. I'm not going to say I'm 100% healed because this is going to be a journey. I'm probably going to be healing from this shit for the rest of my life. Like, this is going to be a pivotal moment of my life, my 20s. I'm going to talk about my 20s for the rest of my life. And it's going to be a memory. You know, I got kids with this man. So my kids are forever going to be celebrated every year of my life. If They're not going to be forgotten because they're not here. So, you know, it is... It's difficult, but now I'm in a space of just knowing, like, it's not my fault, but I wish I would have loved him. I don't wish I would have loved him differently, but I see how I could have loved him differently. I could blame him for cheating or us fighting or his hustling and all of that being the problem, but I can. I also need to blame myself for staying for as long as I did, for putting my hands on him, for speaking to him. The way that I spoke to him, I would call him bitches or talk about our sex life or tell him what he wasn't good at or tell him you're not a man. It don't matter. I would throw shit that he was vulnerable about to me in his face. And I would feel bad after the fact, but it's just the fact that I did it. It was like I was so hurt that I wanted to hurt him 10 times worse. I'm a competitive ass motherfucker. I've never done sports for real, but I'm competitive as shit. Like, but you're not going to beat me. I'm going to win. Like, I, it's, I'm going to win. And my daughter is just fucking like that. And I can't stand it because she always wins. And I'll be mad because I want to win. Because <laughs> I want to win. But she always wins. And it took me realizing, like, nah, I'm competitive. Like, no, you're not going to get the best of me. I'm going to win. So th the way that I treated him as a man, I just feel like I contributed. I antagonized. Like, I didn't make him cheat, but, like, shit. He was going to cheat regardless. But it's like, shit, if I was a nigga and my girl treated me like this, I probably would go cheat too. Or I probably would want to go see if another person think my sex is better or, you know, like whatever. Not making it right, but it's just the reality of it. Like, when he was finally ready to not cheat or to be better, I had already checked out. And it's like, instead of just leaving or instead of staying and actually forgiving him, because I didn't, I blame that nigga every 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 time he didn't come home, every time he was in his phone, every time he went somewhere, I was always insecure or on edge. It's like, girl, if you can't forgive it and move past it and know that you the baddest bitch ever, then that ain't for you. Like, you got to be a strong woman to forgive some shit like that. And at the time, I was not. And I'm not saying that I will forgive some shit like that now, but it's just realizing how a relationship there are no rules. There is no toxic relationship. I don't give a fuck what y'all try to say. Ain't nothing toxic because we all hurting. Anybody that's toxic is hurting. They're toxic for a reason. And I believe that anybody can change. I, I dead ass believe that anybody can change. I believe that everything is mental. Everything is spiritual. And everything is 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 deep. And, and it's felt in the soul. All of our experiences are felt in the soul. So it's kind of like when a motherfucker is toxic or putting their hands on you or talking to you crazy, um, being a narcissist, you don't know how their parents treated them. You don't know that, that they're not doing it to you on purpose. Like, bitch, I want to hate you. They probably hate themselves. And I'm learning that it ain't my fault for how I'm treated. So whoever my husband is, I'm not saying that, like, I'm going to accept bullshit, but it's just like, I'm going to respect him, period. I'm going to respect his struggle. I'm going to respect his trauma because I've been in relationships where I didn't do that. I have, and I don't want to love like that. I want to be a soft woman who's going to nurture her man, you know, like, I don't. Even if you did some shit to fuck me over, I want to talk to God about that because God going to handle you. I don't got to sit here and punish you or belittle you or put you down because all that's going to do is make me hate you and then you hate me. Then why are we together? So I said all this to say that you know you're ready when you can admit that you're not ready. When you can tell yourself, hey, I got some shit that I need to change in order to make this happen. Cause that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with it. I feel like 
I thought I was ready to be a millionaire. I don't even know how to budget. <laughs> I thought I was ready for my business to take off. I don't even know how to manage my time. <laughs> I say I'm ready for friends. I don't know how to communicate. Hey, I feel some type of way. Listen to me, baby. You ready when you realize that you ain't ready, baby. When you know you got some changing to do, that's when that shit gonna start coming to you. I guarantee you. But yeah, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Share it on all your social medias. And I am out of here, you guys.